Welcome to Upcountry Maui. Upcountry Maui is not so very far from coastal Maui in miles, but it is a little removed in altitude and attitude. Uh, they just they just happen. They just uh, that's just the way they come out, and uh, I don't have that much to say about them, it seems like, but I, I have, then on the same other hand, I have everything to say about it. Reams Mitchell makes characters. I was always, uh, uh, could do this sort of thing. It was the easiest way out. And I was always looking for the easiest way out. Uh, although I, I wind up doing it the hard way, but I do look for the easiest way out, or the, the natural way out. And that, this is where I come to be at this stage. Mitchell uses Bondo for his figures, a material long familiar to many who repair car bodies. I was into sign painting, and I was into uh, commercial art, and uh, because such a terrible speller, horrible speller, that I had to give up sign painting because I always had to do them two or three times. And there was just no way I was going to make it as a sign painter. So then I, I became a commercial artist. I loved that work in Ohio. That was great. But then I, I realized that the engraver was making all the money and I was doing all the work. I felt I was doing all the work until I got involved with the engraving. And then I, I, fortunately, I managed to buy an engraving shop, <clears throat> and knowing nothing about engraving, absolutely nothing. But what, is you, what are you going to do? You have an engraving shop, you've got to do something with it. You can't go out and get somebody to help you because they don't know what they're doing either. So you just kept at it until you to master it. And I did it for about 12 years. And uh, that was enough of that. Mitchell loves to collect old and odd materials. He built this house from cast-off sundries. He's traveled far in a vagabonding sort of way by sailboat. Great fantasy to go sailing. Oh, no, no, I wasn't a very good sailor. I was a horrible, miserable sailor, sick all the time. But, you know, the impulse, no, you, you, if, you know, if something's so strong, you have to act on it when it, you know, dominates your whole life and every move and you pondering every moment uh, in your, you know, this reality was just too hard. And you just had to fulfill this 
fantasy or you, it wasn't worth living. But anyway, I eventually sank the boat in Australia, and I worked my way back to Hawaii, and I became employed again by the Spinscliff Corporation. And so, with visions of the Great Barrier Reef and a sunken sailboat in his memory, he was asked to restore ship figureheads, but he soon found that tedious. In his idle moments, he made up whalers, sailors, and cowboys. They attracted much more attention than the restoration. He's been creating these characters ever since, which can now frequently be seen at Crazy Shirt outlets. Oh, I, I would encourage anyone uh, uh, to uh, <clears throat> just uh, let whatever the, their inner self tells them to do, to do it, you know. Tell the rest of it. It doesn't matter anyway. Just go do it. But the thing is just to keep giving. Don't turn to be, as long as you keep giving you, there's law that governs that, you know. If you can't, don't have it, you can't give, you know. And you're not supposed to go out and steal to give, so you just keep giving what you have. And in my case, this is what comes out. Beat stealing, I guess. <laughs> Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Don't let them pick guitars and drive them old trucks. Make them be doctors and lawyers and such. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Oh, no, 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 you don't get that. They'll never stay home in their home. Love. Reams Mitchell does his work and his thinking in the rarefied air of the Ulupalakua Ranch, which is amid the higher reaches of upcountry Maui. Cowboys ain't easy to love and they're hard to hold. What do we got? Huh? And they'd rather Seven. give you a song than diamonds and gold. Get the Long star bell buckles and old faded Levi's Each night begins a new day And if you don't understand him And he don't die young You'll probably just ride away This place offers just the type of restorative a man needs to get back on his feet It also offers a rich landscape of sights and sounds that ignite the perceptive powers of an artist A lot of my work is done first in pencil. I draw it, then I color it. And watercolor is the best medium for being able to apply over top of pencil and still be able to see your pencil lines through it. And the other thing is it's so portable. Eddie Float moved to Paia from Pennsylvania several years ago. I discipline myself. I work a lot. But people are going too fast on the mainland. You know, they're, they're hurrying up, going nowhere, driving themselves nuts. And it, there's no reason to, you know, race around like that. His paintings have not gone unnoticed by the local populace. They appreciate very much that someone is taking the time to document their town, which they've lived, most of these people have lived here for years and years and really appreciate it and know that it's, it's, uh, it's like this cowboy western looking town that you wonder how it could have ever been left intact for so many years while <laughs> people are destroying all the nice old stuff all over the United States. So I've come along, and that's exactly the kind of thing I like to paint. And um, you know, no one had to hire me to do it. I just do it. And, uh, I never worried about whether people were going to buy my paintings or not. I just did it because I just liked the buildings. I thought they should be painted. Come in. Busy. No, what's up? What do you got? Fellow artist Scott doing? Burns pays a visit to hear of Eddie's ranch life subjects and to show one of his own. What do you think? It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I was pretty excited. As would seem obvious, a watercolorist is constantly preoccupied with color. 
but colors are subtle and can easily deceive the unwary. Uh, what you do wind up with, even if you don't match the colors exactly, you do wind up with a color that's, say, specifically your own, one that you went out of your way to make specifically, and in the end, you wind up with a painting that people recognize as being individual or, you know, individual or um, unique to you. Watercolors are a very risky medium. A major threat is that one's mistakes are always obvious and usually irreparable. That's like what separates the men from the boys, like separating those bulls the other day. You just thank God that you didn't tear up that piece of paper when you wanted to and throw it away, that you kept working through that tough spot. That's where a lot of the um, discoveries take place. I think you'll find a lot of people that feel that way. Eddie Float has recently made another discovery. Little local kids come up and, you know, say, oh, that's marvelous. You know, I'm going like, this kid said marvelous. I can't believe it. You know, and seriously, no exaggeration. That's what I enjoy the most is the way local people look. Like these, these local guys that hang in Paella, some of them are pretty tough characters, you know, and they uh, give me a lot of space to work and they call me by my first name. They always ask to see what I'm working on, shake my hand, and I like that. It's probably my favorite thing about what I've, the response I've gotten for the work I do is uh, from the local people. There's more depth, you know, like you look at one of the stores and it really feels like you've got sort of... When a Maui cowboy wants his hat to look its best, he would do well to place an order with Mrs. Esther Beck. Her hat lays show what skill can do to plain white rope. I get the idea from my mom. She was the first to make this lace on the island of Hawaii. And then that's what the cowboys use for hat lays. Not only for certain occasions, it's everyday use. Examples of her lays are included in a traveling Paniolo folk arts exhibition from the Honolulu Academy. Majority to go for the rainbow because it matches anything. But then if from, from the mainland then they are the special colors like burgundy and the dark yellow, then I'll make and send it to them. Up at Brendan Balthazar's place, help with the animals is given by breakaway roping champion Wanda De Rigo and by several boys who are honored to lend a hand. We've had horses uh, pretty much from when I was little. Um, always, you know, my granddad, like I said, took tourists in the crater with horses. We've done a lot of things. I had an uncle that never drove a car in his life. In fact, he tried once, the old Model T's 
and smashed into a pile of rocks or something. And he said until they get eyes and brains, he won't drive them. Brendan makes it a point to invite certain boys to his property to help instill in them a sense of responsibility. But in this day and age, with all of the drugs that's available, I mean, the old deal of in, even in high school, you know, go out and go drink, uh, it's not good drink anymore. It's much easier to go get on joint. And I'm not on, uh, you know, married or have kids at all, but I feel that most of them, this is the age where you gotta grab hold of them. Are those the apples? <laughs> Yummy, yeah. Because when they hit the 15, 16, 17, it's a little late, you know? Most parents, uh, they try and, and, and institutions try to turn them around when they get that age, and it's a little late to turn them around, I feel. Time to get hold of them and teach them the importance. I, I, they feel a closeness, I guess, the responsibility of feeding these animals, uh, taking care of them. And then there's Barney. Come on, Barney. Come on, Barney. Come on, Barney. Come on, Barney. Barney, incidentally, was really uh, on his last leg when I got him. He was thin as a whistle. And I said, oh, well, that's not bad. We'll castrate this pig and get him fat and we'll make sausage with him, you know, because we make homemade sausage. And he started becoming a pet. Scott would ride him, you know, when we wasn't at home, you know, and we hear Barney screaming in the back there and we find out that Scott was riding him around and he became a pet, like. So I guess uh, from, from the pen where he was, we turned him loose in the arena with, with uh, Webster, the big draft horse. And they got to be friends, and I guess it's gonna be a hard time to go. We can't go kill Barney now. Brendan once used Webster to pull wagons for hay rides at the Maui plantation. But now, Webster may look forward to an easy life, that of vaulting. I guess he'll be leading the life of Riley because it's two days a week he gets to run around in another circle and have the kids jump all over him, and then, you know, he gets the best of care over at Hakko's place. Bolting is a simple term for gymnastics on horseback. This and the art of dressage are carried out at the Maui Horse Center in Makawao under the tutelage of Haku Baldwin. We're, we're very happy to have the young people coming, uh, especially the vaulters. I believe vaulting is, is the way to learn about a horse. It's safe, a safe way of being introduced because they don't have to control the horse. The horse is controlled by in, in the case of Wanda, she's the lunger. Here, this is where I started. See, when I was seven years old, a friend of mine told me about vaulting. So I came with her over here, and then I started getting into vaulting. Then I started riding with Mrs. Ha Mrs. Balden. I rode dressage. I started riding dressage. Then I started riding in rodeos. It's been about just about three years, almost four years, that I've really been riding in rodeos. I've ridden dressage all my life. It teaches you how to be neat, a clean rider. Um, it makes you, it teaches you how to be classy when you ride, instead of sloppy and your legs, and it teaches you how to hold your head up high, and sort of like be proud, it's a proud sport. It's good to learn dressage when you're young. I think if I ever, ever get a child, I'm gonna teach her how to ride, he or her, how to ride when they're young, dressage first, before you ride in rodeos. Some horses, their mind, they can't handle that, you know, that speed and all that pressure because it's a lot of pressure for a horse to really come out and chase that call and use all his energy, all that burst. Brendan Balthazar has been the head of the Makawao Rodeo for many years. So it takes a kind of special disposition type of horse to, to go down a road and go rodeo, you know. Think of it like this, you know. You see them racehorses in, in the racetracks, they're stuck in the starting gates. Well, they can't go forward or backwards. They can't wait till the gate opens. A rope horse, you back him in the box, there's nothing in front of him, you know. 
He knows he's got to run. It's like he's just waiting for that signal when you turn him loose. It takes a strong saddle horn to withstand the punishment a cowboy must give it. Saddles are made throughout the West, but the Hawaiian saddle has a unique tradition. Gilbert Aki carries it on in his spare time. His saddles have been on display in the Honolulu Academy of Art. He learned the craft from his grand uncle. He was doing this a long time ago, too. But, uh, and then he got sick, yeah? And then I wanted to do them. Then uh, I went and asked him to show me how. But he was paralyzed at that time when I went to him, so he couldn't show me how with his own hands, but he just told me how and how that thing was done. So from there I started. The rare braided supports are called Viliamoku. Their origins are thought to derive from the saddles of the Spanish-American vaqueros that taught the Hawaiians how to be cowboys in the 19th century. I grew up dreaming of being a cowboy and loving the cowboy ways. Pursuing the life of my high riding heroes. I burned up my childhood days. I learned all the rules of a modern day drifter. Don't you hold on to nothing too long. Just take what you need from the ladies that leave them with the words of a sad country song. My heroes have always been cowboys, and they still are, it seems. Sadly in search of, and one step and back of themselves, Slow um, horses are, uh, they can be your friends, and uh, they can be your confidants, and riding them uh, is, can be a, one of the more exhilarating experiences of your life. Out on Maui's rugged North Shore, where one can almost see Hana, Frank Levinson gives long rides to adventurous visitors. And at the same time, it can have this real soothing effect on your soul and on your heart, you know. We give everybody a lot of TLC that way. And for people that come out that don't ride at all, we teach them to ride right on the spot. And in 30 minutes time, we got them looking like Roy Rogers. In the old days, cowboys must have worked hard on those long cattle drives. From Kahakaloa, moved to Kahului, Kahului to Kihei. To that, they worked by the hour. We was by the day and uh, 24 hours, it's 24 hours you gotta work, you know. Anton de Costa once worked a ranch on the island of Kaho'olawi. He's no youngster. Now I'm 86 and a half. And I still ride horse. This morning she barked with me, and I wasn't afraid, but my hat flew out, but I couldn't pick the hat. I had to go up and see one other boy and go pick the hat for me. If I would get on, if I would get off and get, she would never let me go on again. Because, you know, she threw me out, she wouldn't let me go on. It's tricky, you know. No enough work. De Costa holds a governor's citation certifying that he's the oldest cowboy on Maui. 
but it takes younger men to handle a rodeo, and the Makawao Rodeo is the biggest in Hawaii. That means preparation and transportation. What is the origin of a rodeo? Pretty much all of the events, with the exception of quote the bull riding, originated from original everyday ranch work. Let's say I have four or five employees on my ranch. They'll go out and I got six steers that gotta get doctored and they take all day. Now your crew probably gonna take uh, two hours. Now, I mean, gee, I got a better crew, you know? Uh, or you have a better crew. So the, that's how this competition deal started. You know, we'll do it faster than you. And then it turned to a big pen. Then the pen uh, pretty much was like an arena. And then the arena, you know, started our rodeos. We try to make it a fun-filled event for everybody that uh, ever sat in front of the TV and played cowboys and Indians. I mean, you know. There are heroes here, real champions that people can see and meet. Most of the guys, as a, as a rule, especially in Hawaii, because I've traveled, I've rodeoed in Salinas uh, and a um, couple of rodeos in California. I went to Texas. Uh, it's a little different there. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's Hawaii, but most of the uh, better cowboys, the, the, the state champions, if any of the guys that's starting up, they go up to them and they ask them something, they're always willing to help. And that's an attitude one which you can find today in upcountry Maui.